and we are doing 4.5 and what we're going to do is the little um, I have these posted online okay I have a lot of resources posted online for you but this one's going to go through everything you need to know on 4.5 um, what is a relation remember 4.5 was introduction to functions what is a relation anybody remember any set of ordered pairs any set of ordered pairs so to be a relation there has to be a pairing there has to be an x with a y or there has to be a first chord an input paired with an output okay but there are no other rules for a relation okay what is a function Very good definition. A relation with just one output for every input. Every input has a unique output, okay? Now to be a relation, every input has to have an output, okay? But to be a function, every input has to have one and only one output, okay? Remember I talked to you about driving up to a gasoline station. If you're driving up to the same pump, getting the same grade of gas, you would expect if you pump $10 that the person right after you, I mean 10 gallons, that the person right after you pumping the same 10 gallons is going to get the exact same price because everything else is the same, right? The grade of gasoline and the amount of gas you're pumping is the same. So the price should be the same. Okay, now, what is a domain? These were all words we talked about last time. What is a domain? Yes. What X can be, okay? When you think of a domicile, all right, what's a domicile? It's your house, right? This is my domicile, this is my house. Domain is where you live, okay? So the domain of X is where X lives. Okay, where X can exist. And then, what is the range? Where Y can exist. Okay, so domain always has to do with X or the input, and the range always has to do with Y or the output. So now, let's look at some problems. And like I say, these are all just problems that are already on your D2L shell but I'm going to do them with you and hopefully um, domains and ranges are just one of those things that I hear so many sob stories about. Okay, people don't like domains and ranges. They're kind of scared of domains and ranges and functions and relations. Okay, so I'm trying to make this a little easier. Your test, remember, will be 3.1, 4.1, 4.2, 4.3, 4.4, 4.5. That is your test on Thursday, okay? Now today we will get into 5.1, but 5.1 will not be on your test. All right, so here we're talking about what is the domain of this function. So it is what x can be, and I've got x is 3, I've got x is negative 4. Okay, I'm going to stick it to the left just because I'm kind of OCD, left-right thing. Okay, 3 is a repeat, isn't it? Okay, so I've got a 3 and a 3. Is this a function? I've got 3 as an input having two different outputs. So this is not a function. Okay, but then I have a 6. So the domain is equal to the set negative 4, 3, 6. All right, so if there are any repeats, we do not put the repeats in. Okay, what is my range? Do I have any repeats in the range? Okay, so one, two, negative seven, four. Okay, now this is the way they have it in the answers. I'm not sure whether your um, connect math would make you put those in numerical order or not. They might be just since this is the answer here and the connect math is, act, is connected to our textbook, they may accept that just fine. If they didn't, then you would put the negative 7 in the front, right, if they're wanting them in 
numerical order left to right, okay? But it is not a function. Yes? Um, why didn't you include the first um, three in the domain? Okay, I did. The, the first three was the three that I stuck there. I just didn't put them in order, okay? In other words, I put them negative four comes before three comes before six. So I don't need to put both threes in. Okay, so you don't repeat a number. I don't repeat a number. In domain A range? Right, right, okay? So now let's look at, so this one is not a function because of the three and the three going to two different outputs, okay? So not a function. All right, let's look at a second one, and it is, all right, four, negative two, 11, six, two thirds, four, zero, negative three fourths. Okay, so what is my domain? Four, 11, two thirds, zero. Okay, four, 11, two thirds, zero. And that's the way they're listing it on my answer sheet here, so I'm not gonna bother to put them in order. Okay, but there are four unique X's, right? Four unique X's. So this is my domain and my range is gonna be negative two, six, four, negative three fourths. That is my range, okay? And is it a function? It is a function. Yes, it is a function because there are no, there's no um, input that has more than one output. Okay. Also, remember that it only takes one time to break the rule before it's not a function anymore. It only has to break the rule in one spot. In this case, one point had to blow it, and it was not a function. Any questions before I erase? All right, so now we're going to do, has everybody turned in your little quizzes now? Okay, if you didn't turn in your quiz, bring it up here, please, so, because I'm starting to cover things that were on your quiz. Okay. Negative 3, 2, 4, 5, 11. Negative 3, 2, 4, 5, 11. Do I have any repeats? Okay, so I don't have a problem. Um, so this is my domain. And what is my range? 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, so now we're going to decide, is this, First of all, is it a relation? Do I have every single input paired with an output? Mm -hmm. Okay, so even though there's only five of these, there's five of these, but there's only four of those, that's not a problem because we are showing a pairing of each input to an output, okay? Um, we have one output that has two separate inputs. Is that a problem? Okay, what was this, the definition you gave me of a function? Um, if every input has one and only one output, then it is a function. Does this input have only one output? Nine. Does this input have only one output? Nine. Remember, it's okay for them to share an output. We can't have a single input having two outputs. So the symbol for the no-no would be a V going that way. Okay, a V going in this direction would mean that I had a single output input having two 
different outputs. That would not be a function, okay? So a V opening to the right is not a function. But this is kind of like a V opening to the left, isn't it? All right? It's saying that this output shares two inputs, and that's not a problem. All right? Remember, we got to the vertical line test. The vertical line test basically said that if I ever had two points on top of each other, then it would not be a function. If you look at these two points, two, nine, and four, nine, and you were going to graph them on a grid, two, nine would be up there somewhere, and four, nine would be over there somewhere. They're not going to be on top of each other. You're not going to be breaking the vertical line test. So this is not a problem. This is a function, okay? But think about kind of a V going both ways, and that might help you. It just um, If it's going this way, it's a problem. Okay, this would be X, Y1, and X, Y2. This mapping would be these two ordered pairs. Notice the repeated X. So if you ever see them in ordered pair form, if you have a repeated x with different y's connected, then it's not a function, okay? Questions on that? I want it to be really, really clear for everybody. Anything? So this one is a function. All right, so now uh, moving on, we're talking about the vertical line test. And remember, if we have any kind of a line with a slope, it is a function. Even if it has a zero slope, it is a function. The only line that is not a function is what? Undefined slope, okay? Vertical line is not a function, okay? The vertical line is the only line that is not a function. Okay, so this one is good. We could pass horizontal, we could pass vertical lines through this all day long with no problems. Therefore, it is a function. What about this one? All right. Is it a function? No, because as soon as I start trying to pass vertical lines, I'm cutting that thing twice with those vertical lines all the way through. And it only takes once to break the rule, right? So this is not a function. This is a function. Now, what is the domain here? Domain is? Okay, so how would we say that? It's the set of all x, where x is an element of the real. Okay, um, if we were going to write the domain for this one in set notation, it would be domain is all x such that x is an element of the real. That's how we write it in set notation. Remember, we should be familiar with both set and interval. And then we would also uh, write it in interval notation as um, domain is negative infinity to positive infinity infinity. Okay? Anything goes as long as it's a real number. Okay? Now, what about the range for this one? Isn't it also all real numbers? So to write the range, all we would do is change this to an R, change the X to a Y, and now we have the range. And then, for the range, notice it's a little easier with the interval because you don't have that x and y in there. Yes? What is the symbol between the y and the r? This one right here? No, 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 no. The, uh, Equal? No. This line? Yeah. Oh, this element of. Okay. This is an element of. So y is an element of the real numbers. Okay, it's a member of the real numbers. Good question. Sorry it took me a while. All right, so now this one, if we went ahead, yes? Um, so if you had a line like straight across the x-axis, would it be a function? 
if you had a line, so like if you're a line straight across here. No, like straight. Okay, horizontal will be a, a function. Okay, horizontal is a function. Anything with a slope. The only line that's not a function is vertical. Has to go straight. So that one over there is considered horizontal. No, I'm just saying it is a function. This one, it, this one is a function. All right. The only one that breaks being a function is not a function is a vertical line because all the points are right on top so of each other. Up now. Yes, okay. that would be vertical. Okay. If you ever have one point on top of another, it's not a function. If you have a vertical line, you have an infinite number of points right on top of each other. Okay, so it's not a function. All right, does that make sense? All right, so here we have two points all the way through once you hit this function. Now, what is the domain of this function? It still has a domain and a range even if it's not a function. All right, so we would, okay, let's say this is my zero, zero here. And so we'll say this goes negative three to the left, okay? So this is starting at negative three on the x and say it goes over here to five on the x then wouldn't the domain be everything in between and including negative 3 to 5, all right? So it would be negative uh, 3 comma 5. That would be the domain in interval notation. How would we write that in set notation? Because we have to know both. Remember, this is the hardest test because of set notation, okay? Set notation and interval notation are just going to be everywhere on this test because that's what we're testing on this test, okay? So domain, if we're gonna write it in set notation, set notation always has a variable in it, okay? So domain has to do with x. So we're gonna put the set of all x such that, and then we can just write this situation. Negative three is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to five closed. All right. So basically when you're doing set notation, it is domain equals variable. Okay. Since we're talking about domain, it's X such that line and then a rule, a rule defining your X's. Okay. And that rule would define that fine. So basically we would do the same thing for our range, except we would go from whatever that is, say negative two, to whatever that is, say three, and we would do the same thing except we would change our x out for a y, and we would change our domain out for a range, and we would put the new numbers in. Questions on that one? I hope this is solidi solidifying some things in your brain before the test. I'm hoping this is valuable for you, okay? So now it says, We've got some things to talk about here. All right, we're trying to say, are they functions or are they not functions? All right, so what is this? Okay, it is a function because it is a? Okay, it is a slope intercept form of the line. Let me just pan up here so you can see it on the video here. Okay, so this first one here is the slope intercept form of the line. Since it is a line and since it's not vertical, what's the equation of vertical lines? Do you remember? Remember all about equations in 4.3? A vertical line cuts the which axis? It cuts the x. So all vertical lines are x equals lines. Okay, so we would pick the x equals. So basically, if it's not an x equals something line with no y in it, it's not a vertical line. So every other line, this one has a slope, right, is going to be a function. So this one, yes, it is a function. Okay, this is a y squared parabola. Okay, remember lines don't have any squares in them on their variables. So this is a parabola, 
And I did this parabola, something like it for you the other day. Do you remember what happened? What's the characteristic of this parabola? It never touches either one. Okay, well, this one, it, no. You're thinking about this one right here, okay? And you are correct. This one won't touch either one of the lines, okay? But this one is a parabola facing right. Remember the form that you are most used to in parabolas is y is x squared. This is the parabola that you have played with before. This is the parabola that goes up or down. It goes down if there's a negative on the x squared. So x squared parabolas go up and down. Y squared parabolas go left and right. And really, right now, for our purposes, is that's all you really need to know. A y squared parabola is going to go right or left. This one's going to go right because it's a positive. Okay? So this is a right-facing parabola. Since it's a right-facing parabola, is it going to pass the vertical line test? No. No. Okay? So this one is not a function. Okay? So right now, I'm not asking you to graph these things. I'm asking you, is it a function or is it not a function? Now, if I gave you one of these, it is a function, all right? If it's opening up or down, remember, it's always opening wider and wider and wider, so there, it would pass the vertical line test, okay? We don't ever have a point over another point. So this one would be a function, but this one is not because it does not pass the vertical line test. This is the one that, we talked about extensively in class the other day that you should always recognize, and it looks like this. All right, so it is always getting closer to these asymptotes. It has a vertical asymptote, and it's getting closer and closer and closer, okay? It has a horizontal asymptote, and it is approaching closer and closer to that horizontal asymptote. Is it a function? Yes. yes. There's never a single x that has two different y's. If you plug in an x in here, you will get a different y every time. Okay, so if you plug in a 2, you get out 1 half. If you plug in a 3, you get out 1 third. Okay, you will get a different y out for every x that you put in. What is this function? So this one is a yes. What is this function here? If it was a y equals a constant, it would be a horizontal line. But it's not a y equals a constant. This is actually slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept form with a slope of 1 and a y-intercept of 0. Okay? So this is a line with slope 1 going through 0, 0. So it's going up one, over one, up one, over one. And we call this the identity line because all the points that are on the line are doubles. One, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five. Okay? So every point on that line is a double or the same for the X and the Y. Is it a function? It's not a vertical line. Okay, so it's a function. All right, any questions on this? Being able to recognize an equation as either a function or not a function. Okay? Oops, I lost my sheet. All right, so now we've got y is 4x plus 11. And y is 5 over 12 minus x. And y is 4 over 5x. Okay? Now, the first one is just a what? We're supposed to describe the domain and tell whether it's a function. Domain and is it a function? And we have equations. We don't have pictures that we can look at. Right, this one is a what? Okay, it is a function because it is a 
line that has a slope. It doesn't have an undefined slope. Remember, undefined slope is vertical. So if I can put it in slope intercept form where it has a y and an x, then it's not, I mean, then it is a function. If I can put it in slope intercept form. This one is in slope intercept form. It has a slope, it has a y intercept, and I could graph it, and it's gonna be going up, right? Because that's a positive slope. So this domain, because it is a line, is gonna be what? Domain is all real for a line, all real numbers. There's no restrictions, is there? So the domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. And yes, it is a function because it is a line that's not a vertical line. All right, what about this one? All right, now I want you to recognize a shape. Y is 1 over X. Okay, you remember this shape? This shape looks like this. This shape was a function, wasn't it? Okay, now notice what they've done between this and this equation. Your variables determine your shape of your line. Okay, your constants don't do anything but maybe shift and stretch, but your variables determine the shape. So this one, I got a Y, I got a Y. I've got an X downstairs. I've got an X downstairs. Now this X is a negative X. So it is going to change something. It's a negative X, so if I had a negative x, it's going to go like this, and it's going to go like this. But that doesn't keep it from being a function, all right? They're not asking you to graph this one right now. That's a little bit higher level of thinking. What they're asking you is to analyze it. Is it a function? If you plug in an x, will you get a different y out every time? Okay, now this is going to look like this one, except it's going to be shifted over. Remember, this vertical asymptote is because my denominator can't go to zero. Okay, so I've got to, so this one is going to look like the 1 over negative x graph, which is going to look like this and this. Okay, and it is going to be a function, yes, but what is its domain going to be? Remember, the domain is what can x be, and we have a limitation. Just like we have a limitation on this, x could not be 0 because we can't divide by 0. So we have a limitation. If we set 12 minus x equal to 0, what would make that problem area? X would be what? Okay, if I do, if I add an X to both sides, I get 12 is X. So when X is 12, this goes to zero, which means it's undefined, which means I don't want to let that happen. Okay, so I'm going to say my domain is, remember this goes on and on on both sides. The only domain it doesn't have is that one little asymptote. The only restricted value. So our one restricted value will be 12. So our domain would be, um, we're going to have to do it in two. Oops, we're going to use our interval here. It's going to be um, negative infinity to the restricted value, which is 12. Now I'm going to put a parenthesis showing that 12 is not included in the solution set. Union, and then the second part of it is going to be 12 to infinity. So I'm going all the way up to 12, but not including 12, and then I'm starting right after 12 and including everything to infinity. So I will have a vertical asymptote at 12 instead of a vertical asymptote at zero. Okay? So but you should be able to determine what it should look like just because 
you have been asked to memorize this function and what it looks like, okay? Now, look at this one. Is this in a familiar form? Mm -hmm. All right, if you took the four and the five off, what does it look like? Okay, it is a y is one over x function. It's just gonna be stretched a little bit. Okay, it's gonna have a little bit different shape, but not much. It's still gonna have an asymptote at what? Asymptote at zero, right? The asymptote's not gonna change because if I set five x equal to zero, it's a zero that makes that happen. Okay, so I'm gonna say the domain is negative infinity to zero, not including the zero, union zero to positive infinity. Okay? So that gives you, um, and this one is a function because it is like this one here. We'll make it positive now. It's like this one. And it is a function because there's no, two, no place where you get two Vertical line sweeps. Any questions before I erase this board? Okay, so now let's go to y is x squared and x is y squared. Okay, two more that we've been talking about y is x squared and x is y squared. What have I said about this function? It is a parabolas are denoted by having one variable squared and one variable not. Okay, so here we have the x squared and the y not. So is this one up and down or left and right? Okay, this one in particular is an up. Okay, so this parabola is going to look like that. Is it going to pass the vertical line test? Yes. yes. Okay, so it is, yes, it is a function. And what would its domain be? Domain is all real numbers, negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, no, no asymptotes, no limitations, nothing. Okay, now what is this parabola? The y is squared. So this one is going to be a right-facing parabola. In fact, it's going to look very much like that. Okay? So its domain is limited because there's nothing over here. Okay? So I would say I'm going to have, because remember, your y is what's being squared. I can square a 0. Okay? If I square a 0, I get a value over here. If I square a negative 1, I get a negative 1 times a negative 1, I go back to positive numbers, don't I? So there's no way to get something over here on the left. So now I'm just going to say the domain is going to be 0 included to positive infinity. Okay, so um, I don't know how many of you have worked your um, connect math on this. This one, you don't want to drag around and do it Wednesday night. Okay, this one you need to sit and cogitate on. This one is, that, this one is your theory section, okay? And you need to spend time on 4.5. That's why I'm going over it some more today, just so that you have it very ingrained into you what a function is and what a function is not. This is one section. You don't want to wait and do it at midnight on Wednesday night because all you're going to do is befuddle yourself, okay? You want to make sure that you get all of your homework done. Truly, you need to make sure you have it all done by tonight. So then you can just go and study tomorrow, not be sitting there trying to, to fight getting your Connect Math done. You need to cogitate on, on the stuff that I put on. Maybe rewatch some videos but you don't need to be under the pressure of getting that homework done tomorrow. Get the homework done tonight, okay? You should get it all done tonight. There's a test on there that will be a very good practice for your test. You should get on there and take that test. It's part of your grade, okay? So 
you've got homeworks, you've got quizzes, and you've got tests. You've got a lot of a little assignments that you should be doing out there. So make sure that you're getting on your Connect Math so that you will be successful. So now we're going to do some evaluations. Okay, we're going to evaluate y is 4x minus 1 when f is 3. Okay, so we're going to, we're going to, oh, where x is 3, excuse me. I'm mixing two problems up. x is 3, all right? Um, so to evaluate, I'm going to plug the given value into the x. So I'm going to get a 3 right here. So 4 times 3 is 12. Minus 1 is 11. So y is 11 when x is 3. All right? Um, so that would be the solution to that one. Um, the next one is written in our function notation, which is what this section is all about. If I say f of x is 4x minus 1, then the equivalent statement to this one right here, find the value of y when x is 3, is to find f of 3. Remember, our function notation stands in the place of our y. Okay, so y is f of x. So the function's height is what you're graphing. Okay, so you're, you're plugging in your x value. This is your height or your y value that you're plotting. So the function at 3 is what is the value of the y when we plug in x is 3, and again, it's going to be 11. So this whole section is about function notation. Any questions on those? All right, so now um, I'm going to go ahead and put a couple more of those function notations up here. f of x is 2x plus 10, find f of negative 6, and g of x is equal to x squared plus 3x minus 11, find g of 8. Everybody try those. Just on your little sheet of paper, this is not to turn in, but everybody give those a step. All right, see if you can plug it in, and then I'm going to give you the answers, and then you can ask me questions. I'm going to write another one up here while y'all are doing those. answer for this one? Negative two. negative 2. Okay, so the answer was negative 2. Remember, you're going to use your order of operations. Negative 6 is going to be plugged in here. Since negative 6 is multiplied by 2, that becomes a negative 12 plus a 10 is a negative 2. Okay, what's the answer to this one? 77. Very good. Okay, so we're going to plug in 8. 8 times 8 is 64. And then 8 times 3 is 24. You add the 64 and the 24 together, take away the 11, and you get the 77. Okay, here's another one for you. Here is a function defined, all right? So they just have f equals, and that's the same thing as f of x. But what you're going to do, th this is actually a, a function. You could describe it as an f of x, y. It could be like an ordered pair, but um, that's why they just call it f of x. But now you've got this function defined. Is it a function? Yes. Because? No repeated, no repeated x's. 
Okay, no repeated x's. So what is f of 3? This means what is the value of f or y? What is y? Remember the function stands for the y variable. What is y when the x is 3? Okay, so the answer to this one would be 12 because you look for the point that's got an x is 3. Then you look at this one, what is f of negative 2? Okay, 3, because the negative 2 is paired with a y of 3. Okay, so this is not hard. Now let's look at this one. This one is a mapping. And we have negative 8 map to 3, and negative 4 map to 0, and 3 map to negative 1. And our question is, what is f of 3? Negative 1. Okay, so you're looking for the y that has an x of negative 3. So the answer is negative 1. It doesn't look like it's mapped, but I said it when I did it. Okay, it's mapped to negative 1. So f of 3, when x is 3, y is negative 1. And that's what that notation is meaning. All right, so now look at, we can even give you a graph of a line and we're going to make this line go through here, okay? And if I have these coordinates here, we'll make this a 3, 4, 5. And I have coordinates over here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, okay? And I said, what is f of 5, okay? So f of 5, that's my, my input is 5, all right? So I go up here and it looks like my output for that input is also 5, okay? So f of 5 is the output or the y, and it would also be 5 because it looks like 5, 5 is on that graph. All right, so um, let's go... Just a few more things on this one. Any questions here? All right, so what is, if I have h of x is negative 3x plus 1, then find h of m and find h of w plus 5. All right, now remember, h of m just means I'm going to do what? Everywhere I see an x, I'm going to replace it with an m. So h of m is fairly easy. It's negative 3m plus 1. This one's a little tougher, okay? Because this means h of w plus 5 means that everywhere I see an x, I have to replace it with a w plus 5. All right, so here's my equation. So I've got a negative 3, and instead of the x, I'm going to replace it with a w plus 5, and then plus 1. Okay, so can you see this equation is the same thing here, except I replace the x with a w plus 5. All right, so now I need to distribute because I can't add a w and a 5, they're not like terms. Remember, we can only add and subtract like terms. So I'm going to distribute and get rid of that parenthesis. So I get a negative 3 times w and a negative 3 times 5 plus a 1. So my final answer will be negative 3w minus 14. Okay, so when we do those, we have to plug them in. We usually have to distribute, and we have to simplify to get the whole answer done, okay? Questions? All right, that's all we're going to review on 4.5. Hopefully, that was a good review and covered a lot of things that maybe you were a little fuzzy about on 4.5.